Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the second day of Favourites Week. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 modern novels. So, when I say modern novels here, all but one of these books are 21st century novels. There's one that was published in the late 20th century, but because it's by the same author as one of the other books on the list, I find it hard to consider it a modern classic rather than a modern book because he's still an active working author. So we're just going to claim that all of these are modern contemporary novels, even though one of them was published a little bit of time ago. And number 10, I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I love this book a lot. I just think it's really, really fantastic. Emily St. John Mandel is one of my favourite modern novelists, and this is the first book I read by her. This is a apocalyptic novel. We follow um, various characters before, after and during a epidemic that wipes out um, a huge proportion of the human race and we kind of flick forward and backwards in time following all these various characters um, and how they interact and how the world has changed. And this book, what I love about this book as an apocalyptic novel is that it is not about what humanity loses but it is about what humanity manages to retain. It is about hope in the face of the end of the world um, and about hope when it doesn't seem possible to have any more hope. One of the characters in this, in the kind of post-apocalyptic world, is um, part of a theatre troupe that like travel around um, North America performing Shakespeare. And just that like idea of Shakespeare in the face of the end of the world is just so fantastic and I love it. And I also love Emily St. John Mandel's writing style. She's a very, very precise writer, which I love. So this is a book I love a lot and would highly recommend. At number nine, I have The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. This is my favourite book of 2019 so far. This is a very recent read that has crept into my top 10 favourite modern novels. I love this a lot. Emma Donoghue's such a fantastic writer. This is set in 19th century Ireland and it follows a woman who is a nurse and she comes from England to Ireland um, and she has been commissioned to watch over this small child who claims that she has eaten nothing for months and Lib who is the nurse we're watching has to watch over this girl Anna to check whether or not she's eating um, and we kind of follow what goes on and what is happening and how this girl is surviving without food apparently and kind of the relationship between Lib and this girl and various people around her. This book takes place over two weeks and it is so fast paced and so gripping and so exciting like the drama in this book is amazing I was so so thoroughly invested in this I think the characterization and the historical setting is done so well and this book is just fantastic like it's so consuming in the way you think about it and it gets you like so thoroughly into the mindset and, and worries of Lib. It's such a brilliant book and I just can't recommend it enough. Fantastic historical fiction novel. At number eight I have Never Let Me Go by Kaz Ishiguru. Ishiguru is one of my favourite modern writers um, and he's also one of the writers that got me into contemporary fiction while I was at university having read nearly exclusively cl classics between the ages of about 13 and 18. I love this book a lot. This book follows three people, Kathy, Tommy and Ruth. They grew up in a school called Hailsham which is for children who are not quite like everybody else. Something weird is going on at this school and you don't quite find out what's happening until later on in the book. So I'm going to try not to spoil it for you, though I definitely have spoiled it in videos before because I never really considered it a spoiler because I went into the book knowing about it, but I know a lot of people haven't, so I try not to discuss it in this video. But there are so many things I love about this book. The way this book looks at love um, and human relationships is just amazing. The way this book looks at memory is fantastic. The way this book looks at what it means to be human and what we consider human is just superbly and sublimely well done and the writing style on this is fantastic and there's just there's just so so many things I love about this book I just think it is an absolutely incredible novel and I would highly recommend it at number seven I have The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling this is a brilliant brilliant book and very underrated I think I think this is better than Harry Potter myself though I am a big Harry Potter fan as well this is um a social critique novel in many ways. It is quite similar to a Victorian novel in its setup. We follow a lot of different characters connected by this small town where they live. It begins with the death of a man on the parish council who was a really good and kind and nice man um, and kind of what happens in the aftermath of his death and how it affects everyone in this town. There are a lot of things I love about this book. It is a book where none of the characters are really very likeable um, where a lot of the characters do awful things but where at the same time you also understand each and every one of them and it is a book that is full of social criticism like if you want to read a book about like Britain today um, this is a book you should read because it really is like a state of the nation book 
and I love it for that. This book is also the book that has made me cry the most out of any book I've ever read. Like, I've finished this book and I sobbed for like 20, 20 minutes, half an hour. Like, no other book has ever given me quite that level of emotional reaction. It is so good and I love it and the ending is just amazing and it's just... Yeah, you should read this book. It's very important and very fantastic. At number six, I have The Remains of the Day by Kazu Ishiguro, another Ishiguro novel. This is a brilliant, brilliant novel and I love it a lot. This tells the story of a man called Stevens. He is a butler. He's been a butler all his life. Um, he was a butler between the world wars and now in the 1950s he is still a butler, but he now serves an American man who he doesn't quite know how to relate to and how to work with, um, especially when his new American master tells him to take a holiday. So Stevens takes a holiday and he travels around England and as he does he reflects on his life and his work and he reflects specifically on kind of two important things that happened in the interwar period, one being the fact that the man he used to work for was um, involved in kind of fascist sympathy movements um, and kind of how Stevens felt about that um, and also his relationship with a woman who also worked at this house who there were, almost could have been something with but there never quite was. It is a book about memory and looking back and regrets. It is a book about like Englishness and um, service and class and emotional repression and accountability and responsibility about war and about like the decline of country houses. Like there's so many much in this book and it's beautiful and it's powerful and it's sad and poignant and just amazing and Kazu Ishiguro just writes perfectly. Nothing quite beats how he writes about memory. This book is amazing. At number five I have Rights by Sophie Cumberlew. This is a brilliant book and one that actually I should try and reread sometime soon because it's been a while since I read it but considering that it's been quite a while since I read it this is one of those books that has just stayed with me so 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 much. And We follow several characters kind of looking back in the present day on something that happened when they were growing up. The opening sentence of the book is when I was 14 I did something terrible at least that's what some people tell me. Basically looking back from the future we follow four 14 year old children um, who make a pact to lose their virginity together and then everything goes horribly horribly wrong. It is a book about perspective and truth and the difficulty of working out what's true and what's not true. It is a book about growing up and about religion. Is it a book about Manchester? It is a book about class and a book about love and a book about betrayal and complications um, and the difficulty of seeing things from everybody's perspective. One of the things I love about this book is how many perspectives you see, both from the four teenagers looking back at later life but also from their parents, the local priest, uh, police people who get involved in what happens. Like there's so many different perspectives in this and I love it. It is fantastic, it's a very important and interesting book and I would highly highly recommend it. At number four I have If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. This is one of my favourite books and it's also one of the few like really experimental literary fiction books that I absolutely love. Um, I do sometimes wonder if I were to reread it now if it would hold quite the same place in my heart but when I read this for the first time I never read anything that had been written like this in this way um, and I just it just blew me away completely and one of the things I love about John McGregor along with his writing is the fact that he writes about ordinary things in a way is to make them extraordinary to make them beautiful and powerful to show you the extraordinariness in ordinary life i.e the remarkable things that nobody speaks about this book um, is kind of a looking back narrative as well. We have two strands. One is a woman looking back on a particular thing that happened on the street where she used to live several years ago and the other narrative we follow is the kind of build up to that event that happened on that street. So we're kind of going forwards in one way and backwards in the other way and we follow all of these various people that live on this street and what happened on this day. We follow all of their life stories. This is quite experimental in its literary writing style. Um, there are no speech marks, none of the characters have names. Um, but it works, it works. I think it works fantastically and I think it does serve the story and the point that it's trying to say. I just think this book is amazing and incredible and I love it and yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant book. At number three I have The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. I love this book a lot. Um, I read this about just over a year ago now and just completely fell in love with it. It is a historical fiction novel set in the late Victorian period in London and it follows a man called Nathaniel who works in the civil service. Um, he lives a fairly ordinary mundane life. He wanted to be a musician but he has a sister and nephews to support so he works in the civil service and then one day a pocket watch appears on his bed when he gets home from work. He doesn't know why it's there um, but it seems to have some significance and by tracing down the maker of this pocket watch he ends up getting involved in like so many things that he hadn't really thought of before. There are a lot of things I love about this book. 
one thing I love about it is that it is quite a different um, novel for one thing set in the Victorian period. Two out of the four main characters in this book are Japanese, which um, you don't read very much about um, Japanese people living in Britain in the Victorian period, and that's something in this book I found really, really fascinating. I love Nathaniel, and I love the relationship between Nathaniel and the watchmaker, Kate Mori, who is a fantastic character. I love the writing in this, I love the historical setting, I love the theme of music, I love the watchmaking stuff, and the like little clockwork intricacies which are so fantastic. There's like a teeny bit of magic in this book. Not too much magic, but just like enough to just like add extra emotional poignancy. I love this book. It is amazing. It's so good. At number two, I have The Lola Quartet by Emily St. John Mandel. Again, like I said, she is one of my favourite authors. This book is amazing. Um, it is a looking back narrative. What a surprise. There are many on this list. Um, and it follows several characters um, specifically focusing on one young man called Gavin who now in his 20s is looking back on the jazz quartet that he was in when he was in high school and what happened immediately after high school when his girlfriend Anna just disappeared um, and no one like saw her or heard anything of her since and the reason why Gavin starts reflecting on everything um, is because his sister one day sends him a message and says Gavin I've seen a small little girl who is a spitting image of you who I just can't but think must be your daughter did you ever have a child um, and so Gavin's like well not to my knowledge um, and so everything starts to kind of unravel as he looks back on his past and we follow various characters um, in the present and the past I love this book for a lot of reasons. It's beautifully written with Emily St. John Mandel's perfect, precise, accessible writing that is both beautiful and like so easy to read. And it also like, I love the way this looks at the theme of music and family. Um, I love the relationship between Gavin and his sister, between like so many of the characters. I think Anna's plotline is done so well. Like there's just so much in this book that I just love so, so much. I just, it's fantastic. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's not as well known as Station Eleven, but it really, really should be because this book is amazing. But at number one, of course, I have my favourite modern novel, and that is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I talk about this on this channel a lot, but it is a truly fantastic book. We follow a woman called Margaret Lee. She has grown up in an antiquarian bookshop. She is an amateur biographer, and one day gets a letter from the most famous living author of her time, who says, I would like you to come and write my biography. I don't want anyone else, only you. So Margaret goes to visit Vida Winter, this very famous writer, and Vida starts to tell Margaret, the story of her life. So this book is a story within a story. It is a book about the love of books and writing. It's a book about family and grief and loss and words and growing up and like so many things. I just, I love this book. It has the best twist in any book that I have ever read and so many other things in it that are just absolutely fantastic. I love the writing style. It's beautifully written but it's also really like accessible and pacey with such a strong plot and I just, I just can't recommend it enough. Such a fantastic book, you should all go and read it. And that is it, those are my favourite modern novels. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, many fantastic books mentioned today. I hope you will all go out and find them because they really are amazing. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them and what your favourite contemporary modern novel is. And I'll be back tomorrow with the next instalment of Favourites Week.